Between 1863 and 1904, over 60,000 South Sea Islanders were coerced or kidnapped and shipped to Australia to work primarily in the sugarcane fields of Queensland and New South Wales. It was a practice known as blackbirding. I asked people to picture themselves as a 12-year-old and to look at their own children and imagine them being stolen off a beach, put in a hold and forced to work in harsh conditions. It would be one of the most traumatic experiences for anyone to have their birthright stolen in that manner. Many were promised good wages or tricked aboard ships only to find themselves subjected to slave-like conditions. For decades, these workers fueled economic growth and brought riches to Australian landowners. After decades of servitude, many were later deported. Pacific Island labourers were deported back to the islands under a set of racist policies. And by 1904, Pacific Islanders were prohibited entry into Australia. Those that escaped deportation formed the basis of today's South Sea Islanders, a community that was formally recognised by Australia in 1994. Resilience is a, is a beautiful thing and so is hope. And I still sit here with much of that, with not um, uh, denying the fact that our forebears uh, paved the way for us to come out of this, 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 this challenge, I guess, this life challenge. The contributions of South Sea Islanders also go far beyond Australia. With Islanders coming from different parts of the Pacific, this mixture of language and culture is considered central to the creation of Melanesia's Creole languages, Tok Pidgin in PNG, Bislama in Vanuatu, and Pidgin in Solomon Islands. All are now the most widely spoken languages in their countries. Australian South Sea Islanders have worked tirelessly to keep their rich heritage alive and raise awareness about the injustices their ancestors faced. Yes, this morning we're Jacob Samil Macquire is a South Sea Islander and Indigenous Australian who is the host of ABC's Nisha Daily radio show. As a teen, he went back to his village of Lomtehekel on Tanner Island. And we got to stand on the beach that my great-great-great-grandfather Jimmy Hughes was taken from when he was a, a, a kid. And you could stand out. I remember just standing on like the black sands and looking out and thinking, oh, this is where it all began for us. So being in a space now where I can just be with my people, especially my Nivan people, I think that was sort of an important moment and a, a, a great moment for, for me and sort of, you know, my parents being able to see that. Having a day of recognition is a powerful first step in acknowledging the contributions and the suffering of this community, but the story is far from over. It's a step further now of reclaiming our identities. You know, we've forged an identity of South Sea Islanders, and now it's time to reclaim our identities as Nivans, as Solomon Islanders, uh, New Caledonian Canuck, you know, uh, Papua New Guineans. We need seats at the table to actually sit down and share our lens on life and lived experiences.